team, welcome to another episode of the Rugby League Lounge Weekly Show. Now, it's been a while, but Joel is back. And Joel, how are you doing, my friend? And actually, I feel a little bit scared asking that because we are coming <laughs> off a pretty tough weekend. But this is your time to let it out, mate. This is your therapy session, mate. How are you going? I don't want to let it out, mate. I don't want to hog this video about um, what happened on the weekend, but it's fair to say uh been pretty disappointed this the the start of this week it's been a bit bit flat just sort of it's weird we're, we're supporters but man we we ride it and uh to go down that way uh where i feel like and it looks like many others feel like it wasn't necessarily the team's fault um it is a pretty hard one to take considering taking you back as a para fan it's happened seems to happen to us quite a bit in final series we seem to get the the raw end of it so um yeah, it's it's been a hard one. It's the the performance was probably our best game in in two years, to be honest. It's um, just a really tough performance, and we just fell just a bit short. Um, yeah, it, it, it's been one of those one of those starts of the week. Yeah, no, mate, I completely yeah, I feel for you. And um, we had a little talk off here, and like I said, it was one of those games where don't know how many times you know I heard that team deserved to win. You know. Um, yeah, and that is just a credit to your boys. And, you know, it's hard to know what to say about being in that situation. But like also mentioned, you forget how young that power side is. And obviously, even though you don't, won't see any rewards now, they'll grow from it. So, yeah, and I think, yeah, honestly, I think you should be looking forward to 2022. It sucks that obviously it's stopped now. But, yes, one of those ones, man. Feel for you. Really feel for you. Oh, but, geez, mate. <laughs> but we're going to talk about the four teams today that are still in the race. Now, we're going to be attacking this at an angle in terms of what if. So the premiership narrative for all these four teams. So basically what we believe in a couple of years time or straight after the season, how will these teams be remembered as premiers? Now, it's interesting, obviously, Every team is diverse, but I feel like looking at this, there's a lot of diversity here. Um, there's some storylines that me and Joel will get into today, and I'm just thinking we'll start with we'll start with let's get Melbourne out of the way. Let's get Melbourne out of the way, my boys. Look, my premiers at the moment. They are looking fresh. They are the premiership favourites right now. Joel, let you start. Let us start with you. If the Melbourne Storm Triumph 2021, and we're looking back at this in a couple of years' time. How do you think we'll remember the 2021 premiers, the Melbourne Storm? Oh, well, the first point you've got to make is obviously the, the sides overcome losing. Um, one of the greatest, if not the greatest player of all time, uh, depending on who you ask, where they rate him. But I think overall, most people rate him in the top three, so he's at least the top three. Obviously, we're talking about Cameron Smith, so um. First of all, that's it. Uh, second point would be they haven't really played it at a home ground for all, all year, really. Uh, they've played a couple at the start of the season. That was it. So they've been away on the road for most of it. Huge effort in itself. Overcome the loss of the inspirational captain, the, the, the second referee, as many used to say. Um, and as well as... And, and this, this point's probably the one that, sort of leads into the finals as well. And, and it's been their biggest question mark for mine heading into this is they've got the balance of the the side right. And in terms of key positions, it seems like they've finally got that right and, and who to play where. So uh, they've had a tremendous amount of depth this year, um, which is a weird thing to say when they do lose uh, one of those great players, but they've just simply been able to replace that with the best young hooker in the game and a guy who's an absolute freak. He's got a, a, mo a, a motor that size of far laps, you could probably say. He just doesn't stop. And if you said at the start of the year, hooker of the year was going to be um, someone from Melbourne, yeah, you'd always just go, yep, no worries, sweet. Harry Grant, obviously, see you later. But Brandon Smith has been phenomenal. Um, he's now demanding the big bucks for mine. Um, if I was a side, I know he's out next year and his voice that he would like to stay at Melbourne, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to throw him an offer that he can't refuse because 
he's quickly becoming one of those players that you need in your side because he just leads it with um, pride and passion, plays with heart. And uh, at the old style player in a new style um, player's body really is the best way to talk about Brandon Smith. So I just think it will be a phenomenal feat. I know they've got such a star-studded lineup, but just to the, the loss of the inspiration – of that leadership in Cam Smith is huge, especially being away once again. And that's got to be the biggest talking point, I think, coming away from this. Yeah, no, like when you look at it, just, you know, from our position, understanding Smith's impact on the storm and Smith's impact on the game, obviously the most decorated player of all time. We can argue about the GOAT conversation, but if you just look at games, awards, premierships, you're not taking many people. I don't think you're taking anyone in front of Cameron Smith. So to be able to do that, have, you know, equal the win record in a season is great. And like you said, there's been all these other little things that have been happening too. Like we said, if, yeah, we thought maybe the hook of the year was to be from a storm play, it would be Harry Grant. But it's been Smith. Harry Grant's been out. Pappy's been out. So when I look at all these final, you brought up some great points about not playing at home. So... If I even strip it back further and look really in depthly, look, each when Slater, Slater and Conk were there, everyone thought once they left, ah, oh, nah, Storm's done. They were still able to make the premiership last year. Smith, if we're talking about them winning the premiership there this year, obviously he's gone. They're able to do it. But who is still there? Who's the one that's still there? The guy that started back in 2003. 2000, it might have been, I always forget, 2002, 2003, Craig Bellamy is still there. Now, I I am obviously a Storm fan, and I must admit, I think Craig Bellamy is a great coach, but I've, I've always struggled saying he's the best coach of all time because when you look at Wayne Bennett, he's done it at two different clubs. He almost went back to the Broncos and did it again. We'll be talking about a side later that could be doing again, and also... He won a World Cup with the Kiwis. He won a um, State of Origin State of Origin series with Queensland, and he did um, arguably the great, the worst Queensland side of all time at that as well. He's just got, you know, he's got a track record that he's gone to other situations, built it with Bellamy. He's done very successful, staying in the same system, um, and his one experience in New South Wales didn't go to plan. So for me, for him to be the claim the greatest, it's really hard to stay in that system. He has to succeed at origin. He has to go elsewhere. But saying that, I think if he is to do, to become the quote-unquote top guy, this is definitely taking a step in the right direction to basically recycle a team. The guys that, you know, label the big three, we know how impactful they are and still be able to, you know, deal with everything that they dealt with this season, last season. Still have, like I mentioned, the biggest win streak of all time, all the injuries, all sorts, the home ground advantage, all that being away from the family, and still to be the premiers. Man, I don't think anybody can really help their stock enough as putting themselves at the top of the bunch at staying at one club than Bellamy has done. So for me, I think, look, if I really look at it, I think this might be the year Craig Bellamy cements himself as arguably the best coach of all time. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good way to finish. Obviously, touched on the redeem- the being able to prove people wrong about Smith and also the Bellamy factor as well. I think we will touch on now, maybe let's touch on who they're versing this weekend, which is the Penrith Panthers. Obviously, even though um, Melbourne were sitting hot, um, sitting in first position, I should say. A lot of people are probably thinking Power, Penrith were actually building the best in terms of they obviously had a few injuries, but they still come in quite fresh to the series. But then a bit of a ball over um, against the Rabbitohs. Um, and then they've got themselves on the bad side of the jaw with the Storm. But if they're able to do it, if they are able to obviously beat the Storm and then win the GF, what will be the narrative? What will be... How will we remember this Penrith Panthers side that is the 2021 Premiers, Joel? I'm, I'm just going to try and be positive here because I'm still burning. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's hard to talk about him in a positive way at the moment, but uh, here, here goes nothing. I'll try and be professional. 
Uh, look, I think Boys it's with the, with, with the Panthers, you can probably just say that obviously last year they were up for so long that the, the winning streak that ended grand final time that they did the, the famous choke and, and couldn't get past the storm then. Um, are they going to get past them again now? Personally, I don't think so, but we're not here to talk about that yet. So um, I think it'll just be remembered. They've been able to extend this sort of, not a streak because they've obviously lost a few. They haven't done as many in a row, but a lot of people forget they actually finished on the same points as Melbourne this year. So everyone's going on about how good the season has been from the Storm, and rightly so, but Panthers have sort of been under the radar. Um, their defensive record is really good. I think they're under something crazy like 13 points a game or something like that. So they're, they're really strong defensively and they can score some points. Um, they've lacked the last couple of weeks and he was obviously injured the first week of finals, but Toto not being there and or being injured, he's not being himself and they're a real energy side. So they've been playing with a, a really big amount of energy. Remember at the start of the year where people were coming out, criticizing the way they're sort of carrying on with their try celebrations and things like that. That's just the Panthers. That's how they play. That's that's when they're doing that is when they're playing their best footy, and they've gone away from that lately. So I don't know if that's a mixture of everything, but I think this year it gets remembered for the Panthers if they are the ones holding that premiership up. They've learned their lessons from last year. Um, obviously, they've they've kept that fire burning, and they say you've got to lose one to win one. Apparently, and if they do that, then I'm a big believer in that saying because. Uh, for mine at the moment, there's there's one or two sides that look a bit better than them in this final series. Yeah, like was yeah, good point. They definitely don't have that swagger about them. You can mention all the stuff like the carrying on after try celebrations, but what was happening when they were doing that? They were winning, and um, I don't know if that was they were doing it because they were winning or they had the energy to, and that was getting them to play winning footy. It's it's funny how to how you look at that. But, yeah, if the Pan- Panthers really are able to do this, look, you look at it at the, yeah, redeem- like kind of redemption. They are able to um, obviously prove, you know, a young side that had such a great year last year and then be bounced out in the, in the GF, um, lose a lot of experience, but still be able to, like you said, be tied on points with the Melbourne Storm um, is still a sensational feat. And for me, like, I think if they, yeah, adversity is a big word. They, I questioned them last year. I thought they got a little bit lucky last year with injury luck. This year, you can tell clear is not right. Coruscant's missed time for injuries and also a few off field stuff. Um, Brian Toto, look, he's still, he's 21 man. He's been seen in the moon boot. So if they are able to do this, they've obviously shown that, you know, they learnt from last year. They took a lot of out of it. It's more than just the players that they lost. Um, they were able to recover from that, I should say. And there's some in that club, a bit of resilience, a bit of the ability to get over the, the ups, or get over the downs, and then come up on top. Um, and obviously, was it going to get a bit biased here? I hope they're not able to do that. But um, And also, I think just to add to that. Hey, I'm on that bandwagon. <laughs> just to add to that. You know, we've talked about him before, Nathan Cleary. If he's able to get a premiership this young, um, look, we don't like... Uh, it's funny, I do like projecting a bit about careers, but I, like, I don't like to do it like a pressure thing. I just like to talk about it fun, footy fan. Like, having a premiership and being the obvious main man of your of your side, carrying that shoulder injury, um, he's probably going to win half back of the year. He's probably going to finish second in Dallas year. Man, where does that put him, like, already? You know, like, we don't want to look too far ahead of the great halfbacks of the game, but, look, he, he's really set himself in good position there. So, yeah, for me, um, it's the adversity factor and also a young halfback taking that first, you know, step towards greatness for me. Um, so we'll go to the next game. Um, we'll go to the host or, well, the host, with this COVID situation, the one that finished the highest seed, um, and that is the Rabbitohs. Um, look, like we said, they produced a ball over um, over P- Panthers. <clears throat> Wayne Bennett looks to be his last year and all that. And I might be getting into the narrative a bit there, so I'll quickly pass it over to you before I reveal too much of this season, Joel. But if the Rabbitohs are able to 
be the Premiers 2021. How do you think they will be remembered? I think there's a few different ways you can go here, so it'll be interesting to see what you say. Yeah, there is. There's obviously the farewell of the masterstroke coach, Wayne Bennett. There's the farewell of their, their leader, their captain, their kicking game, their, their, their boot um, in Adam Reynolds. And the other way it can be sort of thought about is that they've just also lost their best player. Um, no, no arguing that he, he's been the, the X factor. I know Cody Walker has been really good this year, but for mine, Latrell has been just a next level sort of player um, on the field when he is doing brilliant things. He's sort of turbo-esque um, in a way. Um, and the fact that they've lost that and they've, one win away from the grand final. Now they've been here before. People keep saying they choke, blah, blah, blah. If they can do this on the weekend, first of all, just beat Manly. And then if they can make it to the grand final and win that as well, without that X factor player in Latrell, who would have for mine probably picked up the Clive Churchill if he did play and South were to win it, because that's the sort of the player he's, he would have stepped up. That's huge. Um, and then just the, the fairy tale, they're, they're owned by Russell Crowe. The, the fairy tales are always spoken about with them. And obviously, as I mentioned, without with Renault and uh, Wayne Bennett leaving, there's movie scripts in itself there. So um, the other thing with South is that at the start of the year, not many people rated the forward pack at all and said that was probably the thing that would let them down. Uh, they've been really workhorse or workmanlike and, Really, really impressed with the first game of the finals, how they really muscled up. And um, if they win it, it would be a good little um, shot up for those hard-working sort of players because I think that's what all their forward pack's been so far. So, look, I think if South sort of win it, I think out of all four, um, it's probably the biggest storyline um, out of all of them. And just so much going on at that club at the moment in terms of players leaving, not there, things like that. Yeah, there's a lot. There is, I think you're bang on the money there. Um, it'd be the most interesting storyline for sure. I think the big thing when I first, you know, put this put this question to you and I was thinking about it myself is just, have we ever, like, because I do this too much, thinking about the past and comparing premierships, would this be the biggest omission Um in terms of Latrell like, to miss their grand final from their team. So what I mean is, like, say if the Melbourne Storm lost and won in 2008, Cameron Smith was obviously um, obviously suspended. If he if they had won, would have he would have that been the biggest name missed out of a premiership team? Because I'm just really struggling to think of anyone else that was missing. But and I'm talking about a team that ran up again. Billy Slater was injured in 2016. Cameron Martz was fullback. So for me, look, if I look at it in my, like, the nerd way I do, um, and I think also it's going to probably look even more crazy as Latrell's career progresses because he's had a great season this year, best season of his career, I believe. Um, and I think it's going to continue down that way. I just wonder if we do remember it as yeah, the, the premiership side that had the biggest name omission out of all the premiership sides, which... For me, it's funny. It's a double-edged sword. Like, that is really cool. But it, it does look a little bit funny when I think he is their best player. I do honestly think he's their best player and their biggest X factor. Um, I didn't say that at the start of the year. I probably would have named a few players ahead of him because of consistency. But he's really put it together. It's just obviously the aggression has let him down at the end of the day. But, yeah, it's, just, it's one of those things like, yes, it would be cool, but it'll just feel a bit funny. And it's also one of those things like, do we put Latrell – is Latrell – Mitchell, a three-time premiership winner? Is he still a two-time premiership winner? Uh, but that's just, you know, um, something that only I probably buy about and uh, other probably guys are just as crazy as me. But, yeah, I just wonder how we will, yeah, view it, comparing it to other premierships in terms of um, that factor of missing Latrell. Um, but, yeah, I thought you brought up some great points about, obviously, the, de the, the defence, the four-pack, two weaknesses that we didn't identify at the start of the season is now getting to win. And if they are to win without Latrell, yeah, it's really flipping us on the head of what, why, you know, big, South's biggest weakness becoming their biggest strength. So, um, and obviously that's great. That also helps Wayne Bennett. And um, like, we, I, yeah, carry on. 
I also hope they win for a personal thing because oh, yeah. anyone who listens to our channel, <laughs> I actually said at the start of the year, South Sydney would win the comp. So, and I predicted that they wouldn't finish minor premiers. Wayne would just coast them through a bit and make sure they got top four. Then in the final series, they'd go to that next level and they'd end up winning the comp. So, I mean, I'm sitting here looking pretty so far. So a little personal note, I kind of hope they can do it. Yeah, well, everyone will know my pet being biased, but I had the storm and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good at the moment. So I have to push back in your one, mate. Who did you have bacon? Um, who was your runner up? If you remember. I had storm, a uh, oh. uh, South Sydney storm grand final. Oh, um, God. And, and oh, by that point, we already knew Wayne Bennett was going. So I thought that at least have a fairy tale Wayne would do something positive and, and do his magic with him. He has been questioned for a while now, having not won a premiership for so long. And I just felt like everything was sort of coming together for him. Um, as many faults as I thought they had at the start of the year. Yeah, no, fair enough. I had the Storm Roosters, so obviously, yeah, that's all gone down. But, yeah, injuries was a big factor in that one. But, um, yeah, look, let's get on to the last side, Manly Seagulls. Now, I think we can probably paint this now to pretty black and white. It's probably... Gosh, it has been talked about too much, but for good reason. When you see something great happening, you got to appreciate it. you got to soak it all in. So if Manly Seagulls are able to win the 2021 Premiership, how are we going to remember it, Joel? We're going to remember it by pretty much every rugby league fan out there having eggs on their faces. So paint the picture of this after round four, there were $5 to get the wooden spoon. Uh, and then if they win the comp, then what a turnaround that is. Uh, obviously, they were, re- were without Turbo at the start, but he is obviously the main talking point here for Manly. And I guess the mad scientist in Des working his magic to, to get in there and to, and to win the whole thing. But you've got to mention, you, it's got to be about Turbo. This is the best individual season we've ever seen uh in the game for mine and i'm talking about years and years back i I'm think this is the individual greatest um uh, we've ever seen and he sort of just been like a puppet master and just everything he wants to do happens and that's why i was in awe of such the, how good the victory was for melbourne in in the first week of the finals because they kept him so quiet but if manly are to turn it around and win the comp it's going to be off him and it's just been fantastic to watch. I, I, being a para fan, I absolutely hate Manly and I hate admitting to enjoying watching their games at the moment. But that the only reason I am is because of him. He's just so good. And it's sort of written there. It's sort of like he gets the Daly M, which is my prediction. I think everyone thinks that's going to happen. And then the same week, he's going to get the Clive Churchill and, and his team will win the comp. It, that would just be... That would top off the type of year he's had. He deserves to get all those, just how dominant he's been. Yeah. I can't really add too much. Like, like I mentioned, yeah, it's been said all before, but it has been dominant. And look, I am mentioned Manly were the first team I hated being a Storm fan. Like obviously, 2009, um, the year before, obviously, the 40 nil drubbing we got in the final, something that I never, didn't watch personally, but obviously, still, you know, you know, reflecting on that, it's, it's, it sucks. <laughs> um, I could only imagine people that were fans beforehand. Um, and obviously, that rivalry continued to 2011, so huge year as well. Obviously, the battle book fail and them getting over the top. So, that the first time I ever hated, but saying that. If any team was the one that wasn't my beloved Storm, I think I'm veering, you know, I'm veering the way of the um, Manny Seagulls. Obviously, Turbo, I think, will cap it off the greatest season um, that we have seen. Look, the rules of the game now, I think, is definitely helped, you know, him execute. But you just watch some plays and you think, no, like, if the, yeah, he still, it is hard to compare, but, he still would have found ways to dominate because his stats are unbe- he's unbelievable. And you just need to look with your own eyes. Honestly, it is just tremendous. So Premiership will confirm that he's had a greater season than Payne, Barber. They ultimately couldn't get over the top. And even though Teddy had a great season, I don't think compared to them, he had great 
you know, the counting stats and it wasn't like he carried a team on his back. He had a great, um, great side with him. Um, so may just be, you know, the icing on the cake. Um, the other thing with, with Manly, look, it's a 17 man side and I'll give kudos to some of these names that we've really never heard of to, to be honest. And that's not to be disrespectful at all, but uh, I look at Tamanu, um, if that's how you say his name in the back row there. Un- yeah, 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 no, I think yeah, he's been absolutely phenomenal this year. Come on from out of nowhere, really, uh, and just taking the game to his game to the next level, really damaging Ed back row now. Look at the start of the year, Schuster. Everyone was saying he's going to pressure foreign and he'll be partnering Cherry Evans in the halves. And what's the, the mad sign has gone and done? He's, he's gone and put him in the back row. So you these will. little things you do have to give him credit for. For mine, they haven't had a notable um, hooker either, and that's been um, one of their weak spots, but they've made it work. So, look, there is things away from Turbo, but Turbo's obviously been the, the star and, and got it all happening. Um, but, look, there is some other players there that have really stood up. And as you said, similar to sort of the Craig Belling style, you do have to give quite a bit of credit to Des Hasler. Yeah, no, for sure. Des Hasler, and there was another year I remember, I think it was a year he came back, um, and it was similar. Um, I knew from guys like Brad Parker, who was still there, and there was a couple names there, and uh, and that probably speaks a lot now because I can't remember half the names, and I think it's because when they were there, they were playing their best footy, and now they're not there. They're not because Des, it's just an influence of Des Hasler for me. Um, yeah, like you said, it's interesting when we look at the great coaches. He does seem to be swept under the rug a little bit because I think he's had a few little ups and downs and the Bulldog situation was um, obviously wasn't the best ending. Um, but yeah, for me, and I think Kieran Fawn's a great story coming back. Kieran Fawn, Daly Cherry Evans, I think it's the biggest gap between, it'll be the biggest gap half to have had between premierships. 10 years on is superb, especially with the battles that fawn his face and also the backflip of the Alicia Evans too um, that we, yeah, Gold Coast fans would want to forget. Hey, Joel, I think we've covered quite a lot today and it was good to get an insight of what we might be expecting in the next couple of weeks for all four sides, but ultimately one, only one team is going to be holding their Proven Summers Trophy at the end of the day. Who's your tip? Who is your tip under this under the bright lights? Um, as I said, I'd love my tip to come off and, and South win it. Uh, look like the greatest person ever. I'll tell you what, that'd be on my, that'd be plastered all over my channel. But um, I've got to say the storm. I've got to be realistic and just say oh, I think the storm absolutely do a number on Penrith. They look tired. Um, and then I also just think that um, well, there you go, there you go. There, I think the storm yeah. are, are too good. So too much momentum uh master mastermind of a coach and yeah I'll, I'll be saying go the storm this weekend that's for sure yeah the boy yeah no and oh, i'll ask myself but i think it's pretty obvious um obviously yeah, it'll be cool. i'm scared of the pen with defense to be fair but they you guys bad them up good so thank you guys thanks to the eels i think you guys will give you a oh, spare premiership ring um to yeah. Um, yeah. So, hey, cheers, Joel. Cheers, team, for listening. And, um, yeah, I'm assuming next week we'll be doing grand final preview stuff. Joel might be involved. See how he's, he's a busy man. But, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one.